What's going on guys, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today I'm going to show you how to create trippy artworks and experiment in Photoshop. Alright guys, so if you saw a previous video where I talk about my Zenslabs tablet, uh, you can see the full process on how this was made using my Zenslabs tablet only. It was a little bit of a drawing experiment, just having fun with it and uh, see where to go. I had some trippy ideas in mind, nothing too special and I feel like this drawing could go on and make it even like more detailed and more trippy. But yeah, I gave myself an hour to do this and this is what I ended up with. So yeah, let me just go back all the way to where it started. As you can see, this is our base art and it's nothing more than some lines that I just drew with my Zenslabs tablet. All right, so the first thing that I wanted to do is experiment a little bit with the lines. As you can see, the lines are very smooth and the reason I wanted to do this video is not just to show you how to do like these grungy lines and make them like grungy out of nothing, but also show you a little bit on how I experimented what kind of tools you can use in Photoshop to experiment with and see how you can change or manipulate photos, illustrations, anything that you have laying around and learn new stuff, maybe even find out a new way how you can manipulate images and find out your own style. So starting from this artwork, the first thing I wanted to do was making a duplicate. So that's very important with doing stuff like this. Uh, try to edit as non-destructively as possible so you'll always end up with your original artwork before you lose everything or whatever, you know? Uh, very important to keep in mind. Anyways, uh, I just flattened the image so that we have the white background. And usually you don't really want to do that because then you can color it in still. But I found another solution and I'll show it to you in a minute. Anyways, what I did was I went to the filter gallery and I never really like experimented a lot with this so yeah it was a good opportunity to me to play around with all of these filters and if you don't know you can stack multiple ones on top of each other uh, so that's basically what I did so before we actually gonna do this this is something that I didn't do while experimenting actually and it's very stupid of me and you should always do this when experimenting as well and that's gonna make a smart object out of this and the reason that we're gonna do that is that you can always find out the settings that you use later on at a later given time and you can always re-edit them later if you're not satisfied with them so now if we go to filter, filter gallery, and if we just keep it like this, but we want to change it, you can just go like here in the layer menu, double click on the filter gallery again. And that's not visible on my screen right now. So I'll just show you real quick in the layer menu here. That's probably on the bottom right with all of you, at least this with me. You'll now have the filter gallery if you have a smart object. So if you double click that, you can just edit back whatever you had in mind. All right, so in the filter gallery, let's just remove all of these because these come in at a later stage. So the first thing I did was distort this a little bit and an easy way to do this is with the splatter filter. It basically like uh, does kind of the same as like a displacement map like you could it, but you can have a little bit more control over it and you don't have to prepare a displacement map. So yeah, just experiment with this a little bit. I think it should be a little bit smoother, maybe like this. And then I wanted to make these edges a little bit more harsh. So what I do is I'll add a new effect layer and under the sketch effect folder here, there's the stamp filter and this will smooth things out a little bit more. And you can also like decide a little bit on how light or dark you want it, basically thickening up the edges and closing up the gaps if you have any the smoothness. I wouldn't really recommend playing with this if you want to achieve the same style as me, because as you can see, this wipes out a lot of the detail and the grunginess. So yeah, I'm gonna keep this at one. And this will leave with a line art. And this line art, we can just like uh, bring this all the way on top of the, all of the colors that you can see here. And we'll get back to that later. So let's make this invisible for now. So the next thing that I did, I just went back into my base art and with the magic wand tool, I just selected certain parts of my image. For example, the kind of like the dots on the like uh, mushroom thing here. And I basically just went in my layer menu and got a solid color and well decided on color. So this is what I did. I'm gonna save you the time here. And I colored in my full on design with flat colors. So uh, the next thing that I did was basically play around with the uh, saturation. And I did it really simply. I just put the saturation to 100. So another cool thing you can do when you want to experiment with this kind of style is you can just edit specific hues. So for example, if you have any science in your artwork, as you can see here, you can even still change them around, you know? And because it has a certain range, it will affect more of your artwork than only like your actual sign colors or your actual thing that you are, uh, think you are affecting, if that makes sense. So a cool thing you can do now is make it all kind of one color tone. So for example, if 
we move this word towards the blues as well. So now this is also all basically like purple-ish, uh, which might end up with a cool result if you want to experiment with that. Uh, for me though, I will just go with the usual, uh, keeping everything at zero except for the master. So yeah, if we turn this on, uh, I just like let my image a little bit be a little bit more sat saturated, I guess. So I don't know if you can see the next part. Uh, if you, it's very easy what I did here. So basically, I press Control Alt shift and e on my keyboard and if it's on a mac you would press command option shift and e on your keyboard and this will make a new full-on layer with everything that's visible so far very handy if you want to do something something like this uh, what you can also do is just make a full-on smart object out of it but for the purpose of what we're doing now it's not really that necessary anyways if we go to filter blur gaussian blur and really like pump this up to I think about 50 pixels. Uh, my image is 3000 by 3000 pixels, by the way. So yeah, the amount of pixels that you want to have to modify might differ. But yeah, doing this, it blurs the colors and it blends the colors in, as you can see. So if you put this now to overlay, you can see that there's like kind of like a shading that starts happening everywhere. You know, like there's not only flat colors anymore. You can see the shadows starting to, to take place. So that's something that's pretty cool. And we can do something with. So in this next layer, I basically added some grain and some texture to it, but yeah, this is all optional to you. So what we're gonna do is convert this into a smart object and we're gonna dive and launch into the filter gallery again. And this is also pretty cool now that you look at it. You know, it's a grain, it's a uh, sand stone texture. Um, what you can also do is put on a cutout filter, which basically flattens out the colors, but keeps the shading. So as you can see now we have multiple colors and shades in the face, which can also be pretty cool. Um, so yeah, like right now, you kind of have like these shadow tones without even having to break a sweat and drawing the shadows in yourself. However, uh, as you can see, this does it a little bit randomly compared to when you do it manually, of course. But yeah, that's not what we're here for, we're here to experiment with. So for example, you can also see if we can do glowing edges or something. This can also add for some really, really trippy stuff, as you can see here, uh, and if we remove the cutout, and have the glowing edges maybe like a little more width as you can see this is also like super psychedelic so maybe this is also very cool to play around with uh, so maybe if we leave it like this and Ooh, i really do like this add some like darkness to the image um maybe yeah, I actually do like this. Uh, anyways, uh, so yeah, now playing with it gives a completely different result from what we were used to. Um, so yeah, that's cool. Uh, another thing is like if you want to do color manipulation, which is especially really cool if you do trippy stuff like this, is experiment with the curves. So let me just try to briefly explain what the curves adjustment layer does. Basically, here you have the input and the output of your light values of the image. This is the darkest part of your image. This is the lightest part of your image. If you work with the levels adjustment layer, it's kind of similar. So if I bring this into the left, it basically means the lightest point of the uh, image will now correspond with 50% brightness of the image, essentially making your image brighter, right? So if you bring these in together, as you can see, you'll add more contrast to your image. However, if you would put the darkest part at the lightest spot, there's not only the lightest value, which is white, in your image. But if you put these around, you now inverted your image, which is also kind of interesting, gives some interesting results. But here comes the cool part. You can also draw in curves. So for example, if we do like this inverted shape, what basically happens is the darkest point and the lightest points will be at the darkest points of your image. Uh, it sounds a little bit complicated, but as you can see, if we just bring this in a little bit more, you can get like these very interesting results. So what we can do, for example, is invert the complete image like this, but at the very end where we need the outlines, we still need them to be black. So what we can do is just this. <laughs> so yeah, very interesting deep fried but very trippy results. Basically, reversing all of the colors, inverting them, mixing them together, but keeping the darkest part, the black lines, uh, intact. So this is where the filter gallery thing comes in, what we did, we outlined in the very first part of the video. 
If we move this on top of everything and put the blend mode to multiply, you'll see that we still have the outlines the way we wanted it to. And I think this is a little bit too much. So let me just see if we can adjust these to something else. So for example, uh, here we basically make a ring which results in the well, semi-darker parts being a lot brighter and then immediately going back to dark, which uh, gives these like interesting blacker dark spots in the image. Really working out with that color. So this really looks cool and very, very trippy, but the thing is the color adjustments here, the, the transition is not that smooth. And that's just something that the Curves menu can do. So we can fix that in one way or another. We can do uh, make a flat image of a new layer again by pressing Ctrl, Shift, Alt, and E. And we have a separate layer again. And you might have guessed it, we're going to use the Gaussian Blur again, smoothening out the colors. And we don't want to do it too much because otherwise these darker outlines of the image will, will bleed out too far. But yeah, if we now enter our line art that we just did before, you can still make out the original image without there being like any loss of quality in the line art, which is very cool. Uh, so if this is not your thing, you can always maybe like put on a gradient map. I don't know, maybe there's like any cool greens in here or something like that. Yeah, just, you know, experiment with it. Maybe uh, instead of uh, coloring the image, you can use these maps to make very different like gradient maps. So for example, maybe you want to have a gradient map with the Dreadlabs colors like this. Putting it all on the top here to see what it looks like. Let's say we want to have, have the face affected by the gradient map of the Dreadlabs colors. So we're just going to look at where we masked out the face and I think it is this one. Right. So we can just easily hold Alt on our keyboard or Option if you're on a Mac and drag this mask towards the gradient map. And it asks us to replace the layer mask and if we click yes, uh, the gradient map will only affect basically the head here. So yeah, that's also a very cool way if you want to color things in. I'm really like happy with this like super trippy result actually. Uh, I'll show you what I came up with with another curves experiment earlier in this video, which was this one. Uh, so and yeah, basically you saw this one already. Uh, I did the same thing here with the outlines. So another cool thing that you can do with these if you want to experiment even further is obviously uh, use some displacement maps to make this artwork a little bit grungier. So again, We'll make a copy, convert it to a smart object, and we'll apply some displacement maps to it, which gives it extra grunge if you wanted it. Uh, we can also add some texture. This is from the Dreadlabs paper pack. Uh, you can get that on dreadlabs.net. It might be a little bit too much, so you can edit it with a curves if you wanted to. It's a little bit too much for the, uh, the colors that I'm using here. And if you wanted to, if it loses the color uh, quality of the color, you can always add some more saturation to it. So yeah fairly easily without like having to experiment too much with colors and everything like that. We created this super trippy artwork, which I'm very, very happy with actually. Uh, so yeah, super fun exercise, uh, very fun to experiment with layering stuff in Photoshop. That's the main reason I wanted to uh, make this video and the main takeaway from this video. There are so many ways to, to stack effects on top of each other in Photoshop. There are layer styles, there are filters, there are the, there's a filter gallery, which is, in my opinion, often overlooked, mainly by me, maybe. But yeah, I tend to forget that it's there sometimes. Uh, and then you can layer stuff with blend modes, textures, and, and even stacking all of these on top of each other would give for some pretty interesting results. And I highly, highly recommend you play around with these, see if you can come up with something that no one has ever come up with before, experiment with it, and show off your own style and maybe even like the, become a trendsetter, you know? Like maybe the, in this way, trends get discovered and styles get discovered. So yeah, I highly recommend play around with these things, see if there's something that you really like and if you can master it, experiment with it enough and yeah, develop your own style. So yeah, guys, that's it for the video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you want to get the project files for this tutorial or video, uh, you can become a patron of mine. And if you become a patron, you'll get access to all of the project files for my tutorials. So not only this one. You'll also get a 15% discount to the Dreadlabs web store. I'll sell a lot of assets, fonts, textures, anything really. And on top of that, you get a cool Discord role. If you want to go one tier up, you'll also get access to a full episode of a series where I start a clothing brand from scratch. Uh, and it contains project files, design files, uh, cheat sheets, uh, and you can even ask for feedback for your own clothing brand if you're interested in that. 
So yeah, if you want to become a patron, there's a link in the description down below. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment or you can join us on Discord. And with all of that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs and I want to thank you for watching. See you in the next video.